Hey guys and welcome back to Azuri Plays Layton's Mystery Adventure. I am really excited to be continuing here in Chancellor Lane. We just solved a puzzle with the cat and we spoke to this lady so I think it's about time we do a daily puzzle. I actually love the music in the background of this. It's so like nostalgic to the original Professor Layton series in some way. I don't know, it has like elements of it. So this is the fourth puzzle and it's called Burger Bit Splits. This fast food chef makes a mean burger but he needs all the right bits and nothing left over. So let's find out. This chef is making burgers with three ingredients. Press and hold A to put the ingredients together with horizontal and vertical lines. When a line correctly goes through exactly one of each of the ingredients, the line turns blue. Fine. The lines between ingredients can't cross each other and if a line is red it means the joined ingredients aren't correct yet so you can remove a line at any time by selecting it so gloves on and get cooking okay so it's usually something of this type something like this um this is wrong already i already know that um Something like. Ooh! Oh, I can't do that. Okay, I see you. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, it has to be vertical at that point. Okay, fine. I gotcha. Hmm. Interesting. This, this, and this. This, this, and this. But um, I was going from burger to so burger. In that was my mistake. That's Good job, Ernest. Sure. Another puzzle under the belt. So there you go. Very nice. So we're on to our next part of this quest. We've got some weird looking dude. This is some bunny man. There must be something here. Oh, close to the day. Did you notice this little sign? Bob Bracken. I think you'll find this place was empty until recently, but someone set up a shop here now. Latest detective agency, it says on the sign. See? Open bracket. In other words, a snoop service. Close bracket. But you can't trust detectives if you ask me. They're just as bad as the master criminals. Criminals. <laughs> they're supposed to investigate. Well, you can trust the Layton name. The agency motto is any mystery solved. I make it my personal mission to get to the bottom of any and every conjurum that my clients throw at me. You're the detectives? Oh, Bob, you're such an idiot, an idiot, 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 idiot. It's all right. Please feel free to come in for consultation if there's anything we might be able to help with. Okay, so he was roasting us, but then he was like, oh, how embarrassing. Sangiro's famous poponos. Oh, poponos, I think. Poponos? I know one of my lovely two Spanish speaking buds are gonna correct me. Special prize just for you, see? Poponos. <laughs> I'm saying it so wrong, I could already hear them bashing me from across the ocean. Ponyos? Hmm. <clears throat> I'm sure I've seen you before somewhere. Loitering around suspiciously. I'm not suspicious. I'm Benny. Anyone wearing an outfit like that needs treating needs treating suspiciously. Poponyos are a special souvenir from my homeland, San Giro. If you have a poponyo, they say you get good luck forever. They say your dreams come true. They say you'll be eternally happy. Gosh, it sounds almost too good to be true. I think we'll have to decline, I'm afraid. We're in the middle of an, an impotent investigation at the moment. No, no. Don't say no. If you like, if you don't like my poponios, how about a puzzle? Puzzle it is, dude. We're all up for puzzles. So, this is number nine. 
the colours of the paints are representing the appearance of something. Apparently one of the colours can be seen every day. Which colour is it? A is black, B is blue, C is white, choose one of them. Some puzzles are multiple choice with an answers like A, B, C or 1, 2, 3. Select an answer to indicate what your what bleh, to indicate that's your answer and press the plus sign or the submit button to see if you're right. There are some puzzles where you need to select multiple answers. Select each answer to push that button down. Then press the submit button to see if you were right. If you could change your mind about an answer, simply select that button again to clear it. So, the colours of paints are representing the appearance of something. Apparently, one of the colours can be seen every day. But what colour is it? Well... Blue is not right and neither is white, so I'd say it's black. Because mm, This should do change. it, I think. Puzzles are made for solving. Yeah, because black is the colour that won't change, even if there's daylight or night time. You did it. The paint colours are representing the appearance of the sky. Black is the night sky, blue is the sky on a clear day, and white is the sky of a cloudy day. The colour that's been seen every day, regardless of the weather, is the black of the night sky. Exactly. Fantastic, you got it right. Well, I think for that you should have a San... Sanguido Poponio. Really? For free? For two thirds of the normal price? Oh, no thank you. No? Uh, why does no one want to buy my Poponios? I came such a long way from San Guido to sell my papanyas all over the world. I was sure Londoners would like them, but nobody shows any interest at all. Oh, I'm... I'm sorry to hear that. Would you like to buy papanya cheer me up? No. <sighs> Doing business like this, it's not easy. Well, this is great. Um, is there anything else I can inspect around here? Professor Layton's before you check this out. How about if we try the door? Hmm, the door won't budge. It looks like it's closed today after all. Oh, bother. Sorry, miss, but at least you could come back again another day, seeing as you're right next door to the office. But I'm in the mood for shopping now. Do you think it's really closed? You don't think the owner will open it up for me? No one to give up, cat. Dearie me, you young terrorists never look where you're going, do you? Sorry? Just look at that puddle at your feet. Oh goodness, you're right, my shoes would have been ruined. Thank you, madam. I'm very grateful. Ha 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 ha. Oh, don't mention it. Suede is terrible for getting wet, isn't it? It's funny that there's only one puddle here and nothing else. I wonder why. There's nowhere for the water to drain away, of course. That's the trouble. Speaking of which, there's a fun little con... 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 <laughs> Conundrum. There we go. Why can I not say that word? There's a fun little conundrum I know about drains. I wonder if you come across it before. Dude, English is so difficult. People that tell you that English is easy, you better tell them straight. Well, that's the eighth puzzle, so we're back in order. Um, here is some very complicated pipe work. If you turn the two, if you turn on the correct two valves out of the eight valves at the top, water will flow out of all the exit pipes at the bottom. If the pipe splits into two, the water will flow both ways, but only in a downward direction. Select a valve to open or close and decide which pipes you will need to send the water down. Work out which two valves are the exact correct number um, the correct ones to get the water down to all the exit pipes. Okay, so this goes here. Oh, can I just press it and tell me? Oh no, I have to follow it. So, we're going to get this memo shenanigans out because I was in love with it in the last episode where I discovered it. And we're going to make this blue. If you go down A, we will go... Uh, give me this. We will go this way. So we go this way, and when it splits, it goes this way, this way, and this way, and this way. See if I go with C, it goes down the same way, so I'm not even going to bother. B goes this way. 
kind of behind and it goes down and down again then it goes here this way as well so it already goes to the same place and then it goes here goes down this way and then it splits and goes down this way fine so that's not really a bad choice considering it's going quite a few places I should have done that a different color erase everything yes so I think B was not a bad track so it went to a few places so let's do go stick with B bam because the more places it branches off at the better right so this goes here this and then this goes here we'll change the color to like this and we'll check it out here again so we need to make it goes from we're going to do the opposite so we need something goes here and here here and here so if you follow any of the lines so this one goes upwards this goes here right and this goes here this also goes this way here and this goes here then therefore this goes to E and this also happens to join so it's B and E there you go but um, I think so at least what am I wrong I've seen how to solve this now and that's how it's done there we go we're doing not too bad it could be worse you did it turning on valves B and E makes water come out of all the exits now all of the pipes have water flowing through very nice wonderful dearie me I wish you could solve the problem of this puddle like you solved that puzzle. There's always a puddle here after it rains. Ah, oh, did it rain yesterday then? One of my neighbours said it was raining in the middle of the night, yes. I don't know what she was up to, mind you. It sounds like it was just a passing shower or two, though. Hmm, rain in the middle of the night. Thank you, lovely grandma lady. You've given us the final clue. I wonder how the end of case puzzle is like solved. There we go, case complete. Killing it. Neither Cat, Ernest or Cheryl notice but a sizable puddle in front of the Lucky Clover on Chancellor Lane attests to a strong shower during the night. There we go, okay so now we need to try and solve the case. Aha! I've got it! I know what happens to the missing clock hand. You do? Indeed! This mystery is history! Who did it then, miss? All in good time, Ernest. We have to call Inspector Hastings first. He'll want to hear this, of course. In fact, yes, I should think the results of the forensic analysis will be ready by now. Ernest, could you trot over to Scotland Yard and pick up a copy of the results? You mean the analysis of those samples that they took from the scene? Yes, that's right. Once we have that, I'll explain everything. It doesn't make any sense, Cat. Clock hands don't just go missing overnight. Well, not necessarily. What if the hand melted during the night? That's a possibility. No, no, no. Just no. I wonder. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes! The hand of the clock must have been an enormous wafer. Now you're taking the brisket! Well, traces of a substance that could be wafer were found at the base of the clock tower. Put it down. Tell me you're making this up, please. The samples collected from the scene certainly could indicate a wafer-like material. It had me confused at first, but of course, wafer makes perfect sense. Oh yes, wafer makes perfect sense for the kitty cat, but for the rest of us who aren't crazy, it's a bit hard to swallow. It's the truth that's crazy, not me, because the truth is stranger than fiction. Really? It's highly probable that the culprit is someone used to cooking cakes and pastries on a grand scale. In other words, a confectioner. We're looking for a master wafer maker. Oh, 
you again. What do you want now? Well, Mr. Lipsky, it's about the person responsible for the missing hour hand. Me? It's you, isn't it? <laughs> what are you talking about? This is not fair. You can't pick on me. What evidence? If it's evidence you want, how about this? It's... it's drawing of hand! I believe you made this, didn't you? As a plan for your brother, who had you make a giant clock hand out of wafer biscuit. No! I was not enough careful. Like idiot, I made stew. I dropped the hand, and it was broken. Now Ambassador is coming, and we are in pickle. So you came up with the idea of a wafer hand to buy you some time? No, yes. It was only thing I could think of. But my Bratsy is not to blame. It was all my idea. Bratsy, no. I thought a plan, not you. Quiet, Alex. I told you just follow what I say. <laughs> it's really very charming. Uh, huh? The idea of a giant clock hand made of wafer. It's a wonderful notion. <laughs> uh, still, I did not tell truth. I made big mistake. Now, I don't know what me and my Bratsy can do. Oh, that's easy. Easy? Yes, make another one. We'll present your wonderful wafer clock hand to the ambassador as a gift. What foreign dignitary wouldn't be delighted by a life-sized replica of a piece of one of Britain's most iconic landmarks? Uh huh. Oh, you British, you know how to entertain, huh? <laughs> Whatever may happen, you will never exit our hearts. So Ambassador for Dufafa, for Dufafa's visit went off like a clockwork. And Britain's place as a friendly ally to its European neighbours was firmly re-established. Miss Layton, you're amazing! I can't believe it. That whole wafer thing! How wasn't that just a shaggy dog story? Ah, uh, but you see, Sher, the truth is always stranger than fiction. And that is the end of the episode and the end of the case. I hope you enjoyed our very first case and enjoyed my terrible reading skills so far. I really think that it was a very fun little story little chapter to investigate i'm looking forward to investigating the rest of the story i don't know how we're going to get to the millionaire's conspiracy because that's what the title of the game is but i am super duper duper excited and i shall see you all in the next episode of a zero plays latent's mystery adventure